Hey, it's Lily, and today we're talking about NMR spectroscopy. Specifically, we're talking about 1H NMR spectroscopy, and we're doing um, five practice problems about this. And I've gotten these practice problems from the website uh, www.usr.writer.edu. I really encourage you to take a look at this website. It's got a lot of really good practice problems, whether it's about um, 1H NMR or 13 uh, carbon NMR spectroscopy, and it'll really help you in getting solid on um, being able to use spectroscopy tables and um, and be able to interpret what the molecular structure will be. And that's something that's really important uh, for organic chemistry too and being successful in it. And especially as we start to add in different things like IRs to expand our knowledge and our understanding of how to use a spectroscopy table. So the first thing that I wanna point out is this is a really helpful graph, whether it looks like this or it looks like this one, which is the one I used when I was in Oakton too or whatever Professor Donnelly shows you um, or presents or gives you. Um, you, uh, you will eventually need to memorize uh, the really important ones on here and be able to recognize them quickly, but that really comes with practice, enough practice and you will be able to do it. So let's jump in and let's look at this um, NMR spectroscopy table. It's 1H NMR spectroscopy table. Uh, you will always have information like this or like this. They're just to look at this graph alone really isn't going to help you that much if you need to solve it. One of those reasons is that when you have a spectroscopy table and it presents um, this information, the area of how many hydrogens and stuff like that, it's not actually going to give you necessarily the full number. It reduces it, it always reduces it down to the simplest. And in this case, we see that they add up. We have three, five, um, and this is probably three also, so that's eight. So we're good here, but in other ones, and I think there's a couple coming up after this one, you'll see that it actually doesn't add up completely and you'll have to multiply it by a factor of like two or something to get it. Okay, so if we look first, we'll see that, okay, at our shift 1.15, this is over here, we've got an area of three. That means there's, there's three hydrogens. Also, um, this is a, a singlet, this middle one is a singlet. This uh, one over here is a quartet, and this one is a triplet. You would need to be able to recognize those, of course, as we've been doing in lecture, um, but because you can't really see it that well from this PowerPoint slide, I'm giving it to you. Although if you really tried, you could count one, you know, two, three, four here, um, one, two, three, but when you first get into it, um, you want to see them a little bit more spaced apart. So if, you, if we could have zoomed into it a little bit more, uh, that would have also been helpful. Okay. So we have, back to what I was saying, we have three hydrogens. That's what we interpolate from our information over here. Uh, the three uh, area at the 1.15 shift area. Okay, now with the singlet that we've already counted, which means of course there's zero hydrogens nearby, we see that from our table over here that there is going to be three hydrogens as well. At the four mark, we see that 4.13 if, uh, ish shared area two hydrogens. So the first thing that I'm going to look at when I see this is, okay, we have oxygen. So this is definitely going to push it somewhere, but it's, it's not going to be a carboxylic acid because our carboxylic acids are going to be in the closer to like 1110 area and not the four area. But what is around the four area could be something that's similar to um, an ether or maybe an ester, especially since we have two oxygens. But, and that's one of those things you wanna be aware of. If we have two oxygens, is it a carboxylic? Is it an ester or is it two ethers like on either side of each other? And to me, this is gonna look like, at least I'm thinking it's gonna be an ether. That's what I'm thinking about right now. And especially when I see uh, that some of these other areas haven't been as affected as much, um, that's going to make me think that there might be a double bond around here somewhere. An IR could give you better information about that. An IR that had a broad, um, I think it's like at 1650, actually it's 1650 sharp, is going to be a double bond. But we don't have that information here. We're just relying on 1H NMR spectroscopy table, and that's what this is. So when I'm seeing this, okay, let's go back to what I was talking about is we have a quartet, that means that there's gonna be three hydrogens nearby, but I know that this specific one has two hydrogens. So I'm gonna run off what I think that it's gonna be an ether, and so I'm gonna put in my oxygen here. But what I know is it's not gonna just end here at CH3, because if it did, I wouldn't have two hydrogens. 
So I'm just going to add in one more over here. This is just what I start with a lot of times with spectroscopy. You just start with um, some figure and you work your way around it. And it's like a puzzle piece. You put in puzzle pieces, you take some out, and maybe you're like, oh, this actually doesn't go here. This goes on the other side. And that's the way I always approached um, NMR spectroscopy. And I thought it was a lot of fun if I did it that way. This is a puzzle that I'm solving. So um, I'm going to put this part right here, OK? We have a quartet which also is a good indicator that there's going to be a methyl group, but that it itself isn't the methyl group because you can't have CH3 bonded to um, CH, well, I mean, you could have CH3 bonded to CH3, uh, but that's not what we're seeing here if we know that there's two hydrogens right there and we have an oxygen somewhere around there. So by doing that, I'm going to look and see, okay, wait a second, I do have three hydrogens somewhere, and I'm guessing that this one and this one are going to go together because I have three hydrogens here and it's saying that I have a triplet, which means there's two hydrogens around it on a carbon that's near it. And so that's looking like a pretty good option for me. Now I see also that this two is not just a regular old methyl wherever it's going to be. And I know I had that other oxygen. So that's going to make me think that, you know what, based on what I know, there's probably a double bonded oxygen around here somewhere. Okay, again, this is can be a lot of times it's guesswork and you're just putting it in checking to make sure that it works right. Okay, and so I'm going to say, yeah, I probably have a double bonded oxygen around here. Um, let's put in this as a CH3 and I'll just write that over here. Okay, I've got three hydrogens nearby. It's a singlet though. There's no hydrogens nearby. I'm probably next to an oxygen. The reason I wouldn't have added it here is because it would have affected it a lot more than just shifting it over to this two area if it had been directly bonded to an oxygen. Now I'm also going to look and count my carbons. Do I have the proper number? I've got one, two, three, four. That's a really good indicator that that is probably um, what this looks like because I'm just going to draw it over to here and as we see it isn't actually an ester. And now is the process where I start to double check. This is what I think it is. But I need to double check my answer um, because and make sure that the reasoning I used when I was filling this in is correct. So let's start over at this side. We have a triplet. OK, um, so that means there's two hydrogens. Yes, that works. There's two hydrogens here. And I knew that from this information that I had three hydrogens. So one, two, uh, three. Sorry about that. No carbon. It's just bonded. I didn't do it that very well. Okay, then I'm going to look and say, okay, I've got two here. There's only one um, uh, line here that shows that I had two hydrogens based again on the information from this table. And it's saying it's a quartet. So that means three hydrogens nearby. That checks off. And so I got that one checked off. I got that one checked off. Then over here, I'm again going on the reasoning. It's a two. I'm probably going to be next to a double bonded oxygen. Uh, that is correct if you look at the table. And I have three hydrogens. It's also a singlet, so no hydrogens nearby. So, you know, maybe I, and so this checks off as well. Maybe this isn't the way I would have turned it in because, you know, I just can't see it that well. A lot of times I'll double check myself just to make sure, you know, you don't want to make uh, mistakes uh, that you could have caught if you just checked. So I'm going to draw it in like this. And I'm going to count again. Let me make sure I even have the right for the molecular formula that's provided. One, two, three, four carbons. That's awesome. Three, two, five hydrogens. Three over here, eight uh, hydrogens, and then two oxygens. So then in this PowerPoint, let's go look and see what is the actual answer. So we see, yes, this is the right answer. Um, just based on, and we used our information from our spectroscopy table. We use information of how we know that um, certain atoms bond, and we get that this is an ethyl acetate. It's the same answer we came up with using our reasoning. And you can see a little bit more information here about the intervals exactly, singlet, triplet, quartet, and that information. All right, next one. So we again, we look at, okay, we have C5H11 chlorine. Okay, the chlorine thing is going to be interesting. Now I know again from my table, whether I'm looking at it or whether I have it memorized, that my chlorines actually are gonna spike up somewhere around here. So that's gonna make me, I'm gonna look over here and say, okay, I see that I have 4.65 and then one right here. And I'm gonna be looking at the 3.19 shift area for whatever is with my chlorine. But then I, I'm gonna count these up really before I do much else. And I'm gonna say, okay, one, Maybe that's five, maybe that's four. We're not exactly sure, but it's only got five hydrogens. And we know that it's supposed to have 11 hydrogens. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this. And so we're going to multiply this about by two and we're going to multiply this by around two also. If we did that, we would see that we actually have 12 hydrogens, but because we have this little 0.65 thing, we're going to realize that it's probably going to be uh, eight, 10, I'm sorry, 10 hydrogens, not 12 hydrogens. That, that probably means it's not going to be 10 uh, because that would be 12, but it's not going to just be eight because that would only be 10. Let me let me rephrase that. I got a little confusing. Sorry. If we just multiplied it straight as times two times two, we're going to have to choose whether it's going to be four or five. This one's going to be two hydrogens at this area anyway. We're good there. But with this one, um, we're going to have to decide what we want to multiply it by. If we multiplied it just by four um, on the lower end of it, we would see that's you know actually going to be eight. If we multiply it by five, that'd be ten. Those numbers are not going to add up to the eleven hydrogens. So by going really directly to what we have here, we're going to say it's probably something like nine hydrogens. We can work with that. We can look at it later. Um, but this is what we're going to work with. Now again, going over here, we're going to say we have two hydrogens here. Over here, we have got nine hydrogens. The fact that this is not affected by the chlorine um, means that it's separate. It's not going to be directly bonded to the chlorine. But if this is directly bonded to chlorine, which is why it has this big sh chemical shift to 3.19. So I'm going to start off by putting in my chlorine. I know that I'm going to have two hydrogens nearby, but it's probably I'm not going to have something on either side because again, that would have meant that this should have been affected. At least one carbon over here should have been affected by that, and it wasn't. Again, these are hydrogens that we're counting for the area uh, because this is 1H and MR. Just want to make that clear. So I'm going to say that, okay, maybe we have two here. That sounds good to me, um, but I'm not going to draw anything else over here because the hydrogens that are bonded to whatever is in here in this area would have been affected. So let's just draw over here. Okay, we've got two hydrogens. Now, the thing about the nine, it always tips me off that we're gonna have something like a tetrahedral. And that's just because that's the only way you get nine that's gonna be like this, especially by the way, if this is not, uh, this is not a singlet. Uh, this is the singlet. And you can see here that this is um, probably gonna be a triplet. And again, I'm giving that to you just because you can't see that as well. Um, single triplet. So the nine hydrogens, okay, that automatically makes me think it's going to be something like this. You know, it sort of looks like chicken feet or something. I don't know, uh, whichever way you've, you've remembered this. But that makes me think that it's going to look like that because that's the only way we're going to get um, um, okay, these three hydrogens on each side. We're just going to do that times three. So three hydrogens, three hydrogens, three hydrogens. That's going to be the way you're going to get nine hydrogens um, in a, a molecular structure that looks like that. And then I, if I look at this, now I've gotten these little the hydrogens that I was talking about from here. And I can count them up and I know that I have the same number that's in the molecular formula. So this to me is a good indicator that I'm done if I have all the 11 hydrogens. Um, and now it's time, uh, what I would say is time to check my work and see, did I do this right? So for one thing, I'm gonna change um, the way it looks because I think it looks kind of messy if it's just, just like this. So I'm gonna say, okay, we have chlorine, then we're gonna go up like this maybe. Okay, fine, one, two, three. Let's start counting. Over here, I've got nine hydrogens. Okay, that checks off. And this is a triplet, you can't, again, you can't see that that well, but that checks off with there being just two hydrogens here. This two hydrogens um, is actually going to be a singlet. And even though at first you think, hey, wait a second, there's nine hydrogens right here. Don't forget this is directly bonded to this one, which actually has no hydrogens. And then chlorine has no hydrogens as well. I had, do have those two hydrogens, which I've interpolated from this data in this part that I've been provided with. Uh, but it is a singlet, so I have nothing, uh, no hydrogens around it. And I say, this is my final answer, and let's take a look. Yes, it is. And so this is just all information that we've gained and that we're just through practice. We know, okay, there's a chlorine that's going to be affected. But, uh, this is going to affect this hydrogen, the chlorine, because we see the shift. And we also know that this is a sing, uh, singlet. So we're going to see something interesting going on. Uh, it's not going to be bonded to a CH2 or a CH3. Uh, the same thing with this one. We count from the information that we had and the, that I showed on the previous slide from this table which would be provided with something like that. We've got nine hydrogens. That automatically makes me think of, of the, this part. And, um, and then that would check off for having those singlets and things like that. And also that 
this isn't going to be affecting this part really um and but it will be affecting this part a lot and we see that again in the nmr spectroscopy table so the next one that we have is c5 h10 o2 we've got some information over here three there's, there's two and two um that's five and uh six okay so uh two and two is four wait two and two is four plus three is seven is eight I'm not counting right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So um, we do see a little bit of this is kind of get, get interesting. We're not going to multiply because that would be way too much. We're just going to go with the fact that there's probably something like this around here that there's going to be two and um, two and then two also with an area that has three. And we're gonna see what we come up with to make sure that we do equal with a 10, but I'm not gonna multiply them now. So we go over here and we say this area is 0 0.78, this has three hydrogens, okay? This is, um, if you can't tell right now, we'll get back to that, sorry. Um, I think it's probably a tr triplet. To me, that looks like a triplet. Um, and uh, that one looks like a triplet as well. Now in here, okay, we have a multiplet. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That means there's five hydrogens nearby. When I see five hydrogens, that automatically makes me think of something that has a methyl group at the end. So we have our methyl group and then like that, because I know, so it's gonna surround it actually. So hydrogen and hydrogen, something like that. That makes me think of it. Um, three over here, two on the other side. Then on this side, we have one, two, three, four, five, four again. Now that's making me think of uh, like this because we would have hydrogens and two hydrogens over here, which would mean it was bonded to something else. So, and we can look over here, by the way, sorry, I didn't mention that sooner. A 1.47, yeah, this is probably two hydrogens on the other side for this one. Yeah, that's probably two hydrogens as well. Then we look at the two point, um, to in uh, and it does kind of spike up a little weird, and that's probably it's gonna you'll see from the um, molecular structure. Now at this two point two ish area, okay, we also probably have two. It's being affected a little bit more, which makes me think it's probably being affected by the oxygen. But now the biggest thing when you looked at this should have been this one, and that's pretty extreme. Um, it's one of the furthest ones that we look at typically in the chemical shifts, and this is either going to be an aldehyde or it's, 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 you know, in all honesty, this is not ever going to be an aldehyde. Aldehyde would be closer to between 9 and 10. The pretty much the only thing that gets this far out is going to be your carboxylic acid. And that's good that we can say that right away, carboxylic acid, because we have two oxygens. And so we want to work with something that's going to have two oxygens with it. And that tells us right away what the structure is sort of going to look like. And it also gives us a hydrogen um, which is, you know, it makes sense, right? If we're out here, we have one hydrogen and it's a singlet, none of them around here. That makes sense for a carboxylic acid because those other, uh, because when you have your carboxylic and we'll just draw this in to begin with, um, we have OH here. There's going to be something over here. You would expect to see a singlet, not on, um, because there's just no hydrogen's going to be close to that. Now, what I was going to say about this one is the fact that it's been pushed over, even though it's probably that we know that our oxygens are now taken care of, makes me think that it's going to be affected by the oxygen. So we say this is a two H, uh, two hydrogens, and this is looking to me like a triplet. So we say, okay, two, and we just start drawing in. Let's, and at this stage, I would just start drawing in my carbons and then seeing if it adds up together. One, two, three, four, five, okay. So I have, if we want to work backwards, and again, this is where I start to check my work. This looks correct to me just based on what I know from the NMR table, but I'm going to check it. So at this area, let's start from this side. We have three hydrogens and it's a triplet. Okay, this is a triplet. That means we have two hydrogens nearby. Does that check off? Yes, it does. We have three hydrogens here, two hydrogens there. That's a triplet um, for this one. And it also has three hydrogens, which we get from the table over here. Okay, great. Now we move to this one. This is a little, you know, it's really close together. It's getting affected because we have two multiplets of 1.22 and 1.46. Okay. But we see 
here and remember what I told you over here. When I see five, that it's a multiplet that has five peaks in it, that automatically makes me think I have a methyl group on one end because I, that's where I get my three hydrogens. And as it turns out, and I'm just drawing in the hydrogens for certain parts, that would be correct if, if this is what we decide is our final answer. Now I'm just gonna change pink colors really quick so you can see what I'm doing over here. Okay, hydrogen and hydrogen. Now we move over to our multiplet. This is a little, and also notice that as we get closer and closer to the uh, left side, we're seeing that these are expanding, which means that probably whatever is bonded to these hydrogens, in this case carbons, are being affected by the oxygen. And so they're, even though they themselves are not bonded to the oxygen, they're being affected by it, which is what's pulling them down a little bit on this on the table and when you would do it scientifically in a, in a lab. Now, if we look here, okay, we say we have two and two. And again, remember what I said from this one, this is kind of what we're looking at. We have two on one side, two on the other side. That makes it seem like it's going to be a multiplet, which has five peaks, four on each side. That And that checks off. So we're good here, we're good here. Now we get to this last one, we have one hydrogen. It is a singlet um, because we have no other hydrogens nearby to affect uh, the way we see the peak. And also it's pulled down so far that we knew it was a carboxylic acid. And that was what gave us our first indicator of what we think it is. And so we'll say, yeah, this is our answer. Let's go check what it actually says. Yeah, this is just the, back, the backwards version. We have one, two, three, four car, well not backwards. It's the, um, I just written in another direction. Um, and we have the five carbons right there. So this is if we, the way we drew it was oxygen OH and then one, two, three, four, five. And so that's our final answer. So we go to our fourth one and we see that we have a quartet here and a triplet there. Ignore this, this is just what I, when I took it off. So uh, let's look over here. We say we have 12 hydrogens, but we only have three, uh, four, five, six hydrogens that are showing up in the information we have. Again, uh, when you run it in the computer, it will automatically reduce it down like this. So you're just gonna say, okay, we multiply this times two, we multiply this times two, we multiply this times two, and our final answer is 12. So we just need to make sure that we note that at this sixth range, there are two hydrogens. At the four range, there are four hydrogens. And at the one range, there are going to be six hydrogens. So, the other thing that we're going to look at is that we do have four oxygens and that's going to be affecting it. Now, the interesting thing about this one is if you were to draw it, um, when you see the six hydrogens and uh, based on, uh, you, it's going to be um, interesting, molecular structure, that's what I'm going to tell you straight off. And the thing is, you see how few peaks you have for it overall. That is an indicate, um, and you know, we have two, four, six, and the fact that it also that it even just split it down like that um, is a good indication of symmetry. So what the symmetry being that on this side is gonna be equal to this side. Okay, so but let's just fill in the rest of the information we have. This is a quartet, okay, that means there's three hydrogens nearby. This is a triplet, that means there's two hydrogens nearby. And just looking at this now, you could see that this isn't really gonna add up if we just try to do it without uh, plane of symmetry. So um, the other thing that I wanna mention is, okay, if we have a six, that's probably going to be affecting the oxygen. This is also another one that would have been really uh, beneficial had you had a IR, uh, an IR range, because they'd have told you whether there's a double bond and some other things like that. So um, I would start filling it in. Okay, so I have two hydrogens here, um, probably means that these are the ones that are affected. I'm gonna go off that it's a plane of symmetry. Um, also uh, with a four, that's also going to be an indication of having that double bonded oxygen. And then also the ether, the ether is really going to be the four. Um, and you're going to see uh, some double bonded oxygens and um, information like that. So uh, let's see, at the six, where was I? At the six, okay, I'm sorry, I said the six was a double bond. No, 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 it was a double bond. That's what it is, not the oxygen. Forget I said about the oxygen. So this is again from the table. At the six, you're going to see a double bond. So you didn't expressly need an IR to see that. At six, that's going to be your best um, indication. And also double bonds, um, you can see symmetry pretty well with the double bond depending on what the other stuff has. So we're going to start off with this. Okay, six, this six area, the shift, double bond. Okay, carbon on each side. We have six more carbons to take care of. 
So um, these also, again, probably aren't going to be bonded to an oxygen, just what we know from the table. Um, typically, we're going to see uh, some R group on the other side. Now, the fact that it is a four, though, is probably going to be a good indication that the oxygens are somewhere near for the ones that are like this. Um, and then over here, okay, it's probably not going to be terribly affected by the oxygen because you see so little. Um, probably if we're going off that it's symmetrical or that there's a plane of symmetry in between, those are probably going to be the two methyl groups at the end. So I'm just going to draw a methyl group over here, methyl group over here, and we're going to work the rest of it in. So again, we do have uh, four oxygens that we need to do something with. Our carbon bonded to a double uh, bonded oxygen is actually going to appear, it can appear somewhere in the one between one and two range. And so maybe that's, you know, we're going to say, okay, maybe that's what uh, is popping up from here. Maybe it's not, okay, whatever. Uh, we can, that's probably though, I'm going to say this is going to be affected by the ether because this is the four. And this one is going to be more affected um, with the triplets. Um, this is really not going to be affected by oxygen. So we've already said these are at the end. Okay. So um, I'm going to say that there's probably an ether somewhere nearby. If it has three hydrogens nearby, probably the ether is over um, is over here. Um, let me is probably over here. And so if we start to draw in um, three hydrogens nearby, carbon with a four. Um, let's draw in a right. Is that a quartet? Yeah, that is a quartet. Um, and the triplet with the two. So it's gonna be interesting to get this point of symmetry in. So probably first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say there's the double bonded oxygen somewhere around here. That's a pretty good indication. I'm going to draw it in right here. We'll work the ether in, uh, or in this case, it might be an ester. Um, and with as we go. Okay, so if we draw in over here, double bonded. Okay, Let's see what this looks like. Okay, this this look this is looking look, looking up. So we said for six that there were two hydrogens. We saw that there's a plane symmetry down here. Okay, one on each side. That it was also a singlet, so it's not affected by the. Uh, it doesn't have any other hydrogens. Also good. Uh, it is affected. Um, uh, not very much so by the double bonded oxygen. The reason we see it at the six is the double bond here, the, the alkene. Now with our oxygen, we're seeing that there is over here that there should be two hydrogens nearby. Okay, we've got it for that one. And then for whatever has been affected by the oxygen, it's not directly bonded to the oxygen that there were four. Okay, but remember we're dividing this uh, by two so that because we have that symmetry. So let's take a look and see what the correct answer is. Sorry, I stepped away really quick. Okay, back to what we were doing on the PowerPoint. And so, okay, so we drew this and we said, okay, we have, when we checked it, we divided by two, okay, we see the three on each side. For this one, we divided it uh, by two also, and instead of the four, we see again the two on each side because of our symmetry. And yeah, okay, that's a quartet. We have three nearby, and this has been affected by the oxygen. So if I continue on, um, to the next slide. And I, I had this in here uh, just to give you uh, a hint of what it was when we see this together. Uh, yeah, here's a double bond. Here's where we have our oxygen. Uh, we get finally to the answer and we see that we were correct. And we can again interpolate all this from the data that we had over here for the area plus where it is um, on the actual spectrum as well um, as uh, is this a triplet? Is it a multiplet? Where did the hydrogens nearby? So yeah, symmetry can be uh, interesting. <laughs> All right, now the next one that we have, and this is our final one, is something that is, uh, I've always really liked doing these. And this is because if you look, pretty much the thing that you're gonna see, especially when you see that you have this many carbons, and it's down here at the seven area, that's a really good indication that this is a benzene. And benzene is also good because, you know, they take up carbons, they take up hydrogens, but they're also fun to draw. So I'm going to start off with, I'm pretty sure that this is a benzene. So I'm going to start drawing my benzene. Okay, I have a double bond, double bond, double bond. Yeah, I just want to get this out of the way first. Okay, so we also have it as 7.86 area. 
that could be um, probably it's going to be uh, affected by the hydrogens. But also when we count, we see this is 1.5, 1.6. That's sort of a three and a four. We are also going to have to multiply these times two times two times two. We get three here. We also sort of get three here. And here we get two. So that is an indication, which we kind of already knew because the carbon only has, uh, benzene only has six carbons, that there is something on the benzene that is going to be bonded to something else. And there's also a good chance that the oxygen is definitely influencing it. And so this again, is, this is just for this. Um, if you want to take a look at the 7.19 uh, region. Um, anyway, so if we get back to here, we say um, that this region we have three. And that's a pretty good indication that that is going to be whatever um, is not affected by the oxygen, wherever it's bonded to. And also, it's not going to be affected by something else going off. So let's just say we're going to choose the lower half of the benzene. And we're going to see we have hydrogen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. We've got three. And also, we see that this in this 7.45 area um, that we had a triplet. And so whichever one you go to, yeah, you're going to see like the hydrogens and stuff. Uh, benzenes do kind of appear a little oddly on there. You're going to see lots of hydrogens and lots of things. So it's not always the easiest to interpolate. Now, the 7.86 area, we're saying that we see two hydrogens coming off somewhere. And that, um, to me, is a pretty good indication that it's being affected by whatever we have on top. So let's say on the top, um, we have something coming off here. Uh, we pretty much know that the oxygen is not going to be directly bonded to the benzene because we can look and see that if it was, first of all, just an alcohol group bonded to it, it's not going to pick up as far. Um, and also we have this 2.48 shift, which looks like something, a carbon that's bonded to an oxygen that's affected by it, um, but it's not going to uh, necessarily, what I'm trying to say is, it's probably going to be like what we did earlier. It's not going to be directly bonded to the oxygen, unlike with the ethers, uh, which would appear more in the four range, but the 2.48 is probably a carbon bonded to another carbon that's bonded to a double bonded oxygen. So let's just write that in here and see what we come up with. Okay, we have a double bonded oxygen over here. Let's say we have a methyl. Okay, count our carbons. Do we even have enough? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We do. This is a pretty good indication that we're on the right track. Now we're gonna say that we also have hydrogens up there. We know that that is implied. There is no hydrogen here. Also, we know that it's implied um, because we see that there's uh, four bonds bonded to that carbon. Now we count down here, again, we said we split this up. We said, okay, these are the hydrogens that aren't really affected by this oxygen at all are the fact that there's another bond here and not just a hydrogen. And we also see that if you're in this sort of range, you've got something that's like a triplet and you're definitely seeing that affected. Even if you're up here, you're affected by this hydrogen or the hydrogen that's bonded to this carbon is affected by it. One and two, that's a triplet. One and two, that's a triplet. From here, one and two, that's also a triplet. Now we get up to here and we say, okay, does this work with our double bonded oxygen theory with it going to a methyl group and some are group, even a benzene? And yeah, it does. Somewhere between the um, one and three range, so 2.48 works pretty well, especially if you're leaning closer to the three range, you're gonna see something like a double bonded oxygen. Also, we have three hydrogens over here. This really does fit into our 1.61 times two being equal to three. And we see that if we look at this, um, that uh, you don't really see it over here, um, but you do see it right here, that it's a singlet. This is what we're looking at. This is to this one, and we see that's a singlet. And that makes sense. There are no other hydrogens bonded nearby to it because that carbon has four bonds, no hydrogens. Again, the same thing for this one. And then we take a look at this one and we see it's a doublet. And again, we have one hydrogen here, that's a doublet. On here, the side, we have one hydrogen here, there's a doublet. None over here, so no triplet, just a doublet. And so when we're checking our answers, so I'm gonna change the pen one more time and go over this. We see that this is our um, 7.45 to 7.32 range um, over here. We see, yeah, there's a lot of spikes. It's a benzene, it's gonna look a little funny. Um, and we also see that it's a triplet and that it works with two hydrogens nearby, if it's that one. If it's this one, there's two hydrogens nearby. If it's this one, there's two hydrogens nearby. Now we're gonna move up to the hydrogens that are on the upper part of the benzene, or at least what we designated to be the upper part of the benzene. And we see that, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit more affected by the oxygen and it's a doublet. This is what we're seeing here. Yeah, one over here, that's a doublet. If it's this one, one over here, that's a doublet. 
And now last but not least, we see that we have that carbox, uh, I'm sorry, the um, oxygen, the ketone uh, bonded to some R group. And we see, yeah, that really does work in well. That's what we would expect to see on the NMR spectroscopy. And um, so we're going to be good with that one. And then we go all the way here. It's a singlet. That's good because there's no hydrogen nearby. And that's what we would expect to see, especially for something that has three hydrogens, which we said it did from over here. So that's what I have for this. Um, you can see, yeah, that's the right answer. Um, and when we'll get into more like putting IRs together with um, spectroscopy and stuff like that, but I hope this was helpful for you. I will send out the PowerPoint with the recording and I really again encourage you to use a website.